Sorry, okay, really. Need to go, John. Okay, well, we'll <laughs> okay, call to order. It is 10.51 a.m. Change for us. Um, this is the open section of the board meeting. Territorial acknowledgement. We'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are in the Robert and Huron Treaty territory and that the land on which we are gathered is the traditional territory of the Shinnebec. Specifically, the Garden River and Bachelon of First Nation, as well as Meeks Roll call. Hello, Paul. Bruno, Ian McKenzie, yes. Marchie, yes. Sunny, yes. Um, Eva Gabuch has resigned over the summer. I just want to take this opportunity to thank her for her service and um, wish her all the best in the future. And uh, she will be replaced by the city in due course as usual. Um, Steve Stevenson, here, Zuge, Sarah, Lisa Hodgson, not here. Lincoln, not here. Angela, here. Tom, um, Jervé, are you there? Tom is not here at this point. No? Okay. Kathleen, did I miss anyone, Sarah? That's Chelsea's it. here and Inspector Clinton as well. Yes. Chelsea. Yes. Thank you. Questions and information arising over the minutes and not otherwise on the agenda. Any? Sunny? Archie? Ian? I'm good, no? good, thank you. Okay. Seeing none. Moving to the adoption of the minutes on June 27th, a long time. Moved by Ian, seconded by Marchie, resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting is presented be hereby approved. All in favor? Approved. Yes. Uh, motion to accept the agenda uh, for October 3rd, 2024. Moved by Marchie, seconded by Ian, uh, resolved that the agenda of the regular meeting is presented be hereby approved. All in favor? Okay, this next section, Chief, I'm going to just move to communications and reports. Oh, uh, okay. For information, right there. Should you, we should be doing the budget or what was the okay, what was we discussed in here? Okay, so so I just can yeah. right. Okay, so we can do the budget. I was just going to move it, but let's do that. Yeah, Angela, we have a presentation for our budget. We just doing the resolution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Matter arising from in camera moved by Ian, seconded by Marchie. Resolved that the board approved the 2025 budget as presented on this day, October 3rd, 2024, in the amount of 40 million one hundred and seventy thousand eight hundred and ninety-seven, reflecting an increase of eight point one nine. Over 2024, this approved budget will be brought forward to the city of Sault Ste. Marie. All in favor? Questions first or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Marchi, yes. Ian, yes. Sunny? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Moved by and seconded by the resolution for the pistols. Let's move on to that. Uh, a mover, Ian, seconder. Seconder, please. Ian, uh, Sunny, uh, Archie. Resolve that the board approve the transition of clock G45 pistols. You should say nine millimeter pistols. Nine millimeters. Okay, I don't know much about pistols. <laughs> pistols for the Sault Ste. Marie Police Services in 2025 with the cost of approximately 245000 to come out of the Police Capital Reserve. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? March, yes. 
Yes, yeah, yeah. Danny, you're okay. Yep. Thank you. Approve. Um, resolve that the board and the automatic car buyings in 2025 meet the new requirement of the Community Safety and Policing Act with a cost of approximately 53,000 to come out of the police capital reserve fund. I need a mover. Ian, Marty, seconder. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Being none, all in favor. Danny, we good? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Chief, I think we're there. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll take you to uh, the board account ledger that's on your screen. And I've been assured uh, by uh, our accountant that uh, there's been no changes to that uh, budget line. We'll jump straight into your overtime on your screen. And we'll be doing overtime for. Um, you can see we're doing both July and August, so. Um, we went from 121 in June to 138 in July to 117 down in August. Um, they are relatively consistent with what happened in 2023 uh, in terms of being on par with last year. This time last year we were we were at 780 in overtime. This year we're at 938, which is about 150 increase. It was a busy summer. Uh, overtime is usually generated. Uh, simply by either not meeting complement, usually on weekends, where we have to call in people from overtime to backfill uh, sick or unavailable for service. Uh, but in terms of occurrences, uh, we had uh, on the 12th of July a shooting, male shot in the foot. We had drug warrants on the 13th of July, barricaded mail on the 19th, serious MVC on Great Northern Road on the 19th. Uh, weapon calls on the 19th. We had two protests on the 20th and 21st of July. We had a stabbing on the 22nd of July at Cora High School. Um, we had drug execution warrants on the 26th of July and 31st of July. As well in August, we had a theft of a firearm in the city on the 8th of August. And uh, we had a serious assault with head injuries on the boardwalk on the 15th of August. All of those occurrences are basically all hands on deck um, and it does result in additional overtime. We go to the next uh, slide. Uh, we'll see um, again in terms of our shortage of staff and overtime. Uh, in June, we were at 33, that jumped to 48 and 43. A lot of that is being driven by uh, some of our, we have three full-time dispatchers that uh, are unable to attend work right now, and that contributed significantly to that potential increase in overtime over July and August. Um, we want to move to our overtime uh, costs related to court. Jump ahead. Uh, you can see that um, Year to date, this time last year, we were at 62. Year to date, this time this year, we're at 105, which is you know, a significant increase. And we've had uh, significant overtime costs at the courthouse. We had um, a homicide for three accused persons and another homicide that are now in our court system and are extremely expensive in terms of uh, witness fees for our own members and overtime. So when we look at our budget overall, we'll see that we are pretty well on track, even though we've had some blips in overtime. Um, we are, you know, within the third. We're under a third of salary remaining. So we have 36% of our, our budget remaining and we have a third of the year to go. So we're about 3% under if you look at where our money sits throughout the year. I mean, that does change based on a variety of things coming forward. But if we're simply seeing where we sit in our budget usage for a 24, we're about 3% under where we could be at this point with 36% remaining in our budget. 
that's the budget presentation. Any questions or comments? Start with you, Sunny. I'm good, thanks. Good, thank you, Margie. Good. Thank you, Ian. I'm good. Thank you. So I'm going to take you to uh, now our uh, basically looking at our occurrences, and I'm going to go even though we we uh, June and July separately a uh, month to month. I want to take you to basically the cumulative July occurrence workloads. That way, it's not repetitive, and it's more robust data. So I'll get yeah. So that's the uh, July year to date in front of you. So we can see uh, our occurrences are up um, compared to last year by. 6% uh, reportable are up 14% non or down one. So overall we're about 6% up. Uh, our crimes of violence show consistent uh, reduction in crimes of violence. If you look at our robberies are from 46 to 42 year to date, uh, 451 to 395 on assaults. Uh, sex assaults are down 59 to 43 and our intimate uh, Partner violence did go up 6.1%, uh, and we'll speak to that further in our statistics there when we talk about our, our follow-up call program for IPV. Property crimes are down significantly across the board. Uh, Year-to-date for July between 23 and 24, break and enter totals went from 346 to 254. That's down 27%. Businesses uh, down 7 or 8%. Uh, residences are down 34%, or 243 the previous year, 160 this year. Uh, temp B&Es are down as well. Uh, we go down to theft of motor vehicle. We're down 13%. We went from 69 to 60. Um, thefts have increased, though. Uh, when we see shoplifting, it increased 53%. We went from 580 to 891. Um, Thefts overall went from 1360 to 1462, which is 8 percent, but shop shoplifting went up 54 percent. Uh, theft from motor vehicles went down 22 percent. And I think a part of the representation here is the fact that online reporting for thefts certainly will accessibility to reporting tends to increase your numbers a bit, but we are dealing with uh, significant shoplifting. You know, not just in Sault Ste. Marie, but across um, the board in terms of the deterrent effect. Uh, certain members of the community that survive on theft, uh, there is very little deterrent. They go in, they steal. Um, or they're on video, we catch them, we put them before the courts are released, and they continue to do that pattern of behavior. And I've been very vocal about that in the past, and I won't stop because something has to be done to increase the deterrent system in our criminal justice system. On sudden deaths, um, relatively constant, 97, 96. Um, motor vehicle collisions are down 5% and year to date. Impaired driving is down 55% from 20 to 9. Bail violations are down 18% and mental health are up from 311 to 370 or 20% increase. Well, that's your cumulative uh, statistics year to date. It's the best number to know where we sit compared to last year, same time by the end of July. Questions? Any questions or comments? Any none? Okay, okay, we'll go on to the IPV stats. So, um, as you know, we instituted in March uh, uh, follow up intimate partner violence project statistics and basically. Um, anyone uh, that fits the category of a call of an earlier IPV or property removal, they get a follow up call from our uh, our members to say, you know, is there anything that happened that you want to tell us again? Is your safety plan up and running? Do you need any more resources from the community? And out of that, you can see we've made almost 700 calls, 671 since March of 24. Out of those 671 calls, 28 new calls for service were generated and eight individuals were charged. That's eight individuals that would not have been charged pre uh, this project. So um, even one individual charged, to be blunt, is uh, 
a reason to continue and it's not a project it'll be a regular way of operating i can tell you that there are other services in ontario that are doing something similar i can tell you that we have presented on this uh, across canada myself once in uh, halifax and inspector dewar did a presentation to the opp on it in terms of uh, the validity of the program and the continuation of it I want to go to use of force reports uh, for July and August. Yeah, pull it up there. So July and August, you can see we had seven in June uh, in terms of incidents. Uh, went to 10 in July, eight in August, relatively consistent. Uh, firearms pointed three in June, but five in July and eight in August. Um, CEW conducted energy weapon went from uh, one in June, four in July, and one in August. And um, the actual incidents are in your board report, uh, board members. And if we go through uh, to the back, our year to date stats, which I always sort of show you, uh, this time last year we had 15. Um, this year we only had eight, so we are down. Uh, year to date incidents went from 70 to 50. Year to date reports went from 113 and 23 to 69. So we're down 44 there, which is good news story. Public complaints against the police um, is your next. Uh, and they are all there for you. Um, we had a total of 15 new complaints in June of 24. If you go to the bottom of the page, you'll see when we look at year to date, uh, this time last year we had 46. This time uh, this year we had 40. So um, relatively consistent with uh, the number of complaints. Your travel log is in front of you on the next page. Uh, that shows all the various uh, conferences and whatnot. Some are in one of the issues here, all of these have been budgeted um, in the last year's budget. There's nothing from my perspective out of line. Um, and notes of appreciation, and uh, you'll see in front of you here, there's five notes of appreciation. A lot of these come in on our web server, but it's important for the community to, you know, see how um, uh, the community recognizes the individual officers efforts and you can see in june uh, um, entry on the website thanking constable undergan uh, newly minted member of our service for assisting in a family problem in july uh, we had a, a website comment thanking constable bill you for his assistance in july we had received another one thanking sergeant clayton for his assistance on a homeowner issue uh, in July, another website for uh, thank you for Constable Williams, Guild, and Mooring in a motor vehicle collision. And in July, we received uh, an email from a retired officer thanking Sergeant Crema, Potter, and Drew Boldy have been our comm center for their assistance uh, with an elderly friend. So those are good to see that, uh, you know, our community does appreciate the efforts where our members do sometimes go above and beyond. And that's uh, the presentation from me, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any questions or comments before we move on to the presentation? Yeah. Mr. Board, just to say it is, as the Chief indicated, when you have people putting the time out to write and compliment our police officers, I think that's a big boast for the police services itself. As well as those involved. Thank you. Actually, Sammy, you okay? Um, presentation. So, um, yes, sorry. I'll I'll jump in uh, just before Bill gets up. We we've been telling you about our in-car system. This is just a short video. I want just to see so you can physically sort of see it, how it works, how it's initiated, and I have Bill here if you have any questions because he's the expert on uh, the whole process so uh, i guess we'll just run the video bill and then uh, if you have any questions bill's here for you
So any questions, uh, board members? Uh, basically, Bill, you can talk about how they turn it on, when they turn it off, mm -hmm. et cetera. So our in-car camera system, all of our frontline vehicles currently have them installed. We have only activated uh, four or five units as of right now, and that way the trained officers can use those specific units, and the ones that aren't trained are still using the ones of where the units are de deactivated. Um, we anticipate by early next week, all the front line will be trained. The only issue is, and I'm sure you can appreciate during scheduling, one platoon is a little bit harder to hit on the other ones, especially when they land on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So our Sergeant Series in charge of training for our encounter cameras, um, he's actually come out on the weekends to try and line up the training and catch them on their day shifts before they go out on the road. So we anticipate by Monday or Tuesday next week, just about all the front line will be uh, trained in them, and then we can activate the additional cars and have them all working. But right now, they're actively using them. Uh, the ones that are trained, traffic services have been up and running with them for over three weeks, and that evidence is being uploaded to DEMS and been shared with the provincial Texas Crown. Good point. Questions? Yeah. So the cameras are off work when you turn the lights on? That's correct. So they're not on for the full shift? No, the amount of data that would be collected with the non-evidentiary value would be just overwhelming. So the way it works is you can manually, manually turn them on. Uh, they automatically turn on when we activate the lights after a few seconds. And also, um, they're also based on certain G-forces. So if there's a collision or something, we'll look at if the car reads that and the camera would activate. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, now that we have the the the, the car in car car camera system working, what's the potential actual officers themselves being uh, equipped with cameras? Their body worn cameras. Yeah. Those are in the next phase of our uh, our future uh, yeah. technology thing. So within the next uh, month, we'll be implementing training for the body worn cameras. Once everybody is trained. Before the end of the year, body worn cameras will be able. So now you'll have two different feeds. At a vehicle stop, for example, you have the in car camera feed. Yeah. And as soon as the officer gets out of the car, they'll be instructed to turn their camera on. And when they're dealing with somebody, you'll also have that feed. So fabulous. And if I could add, uh, Mr. Chair, sorry for interrupting, uh, Bill uh, did a lot of research on in car and body worn across the province. And it was important to get the DEMS units set up, which is basically where the data goes and certain stuff has to be extracted for court and stuff goes in. And so that unit is critical. The, the high end part of this is very critical to the success of the program because you have to manage all that data. So I'd like to publicly thank Bill for that initiative because there are some across the province that didn't do it that way. And unfortunately, the cameras sit in a box. Is that the data has to have a place to go and be managed appropriately. So great job, Bill. Thank you. Sunny, any questions? No, I'm good. Thank you. And thank you. And I want to thank Bill for all of his work. And I know that this is going to roll out as a, a very good uh, program for all of us. And I think the citizens of Sault Ste. Marie will be the beneficiary of all of this new technology. And it certainly will help our officers on top of things. So thank you again. Sarah, Labor Conference. Yep. So I actually have two events that are upcoming um, for the board if they wish to participate. The first one is the um, OACP Zone 1A meeting. This is in conjunction with um, boards. It is in Sudbury. It's November 13th and 14th. So if there's any board members who would like to participate in this morning uh, meeting, please let me know and I will register you and book your, make your travel arrangements and whatnot. Okay. Um, 
Is there anybody that knows right off the top they want to go? Or, John, I believe you've expressed an interest. For the yes. It's always depending on the schedule. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I'll be in contact. Yeah, and this we are budgeted for this as well. We the board does have a budget line for and the second one for these meetings. Um, the second one is the OAPSB Labor Conference. Um, this will take place in Toronto, November twenty sixth and twenty seventh. We typically have board representation at this one as well. So if there's anybody interested, it fills up very quickly. So I I need to know. I'm very interested in going to that. Okay. Yeah, and it is an excellent conference. Uh, yes. If I'm jump yeah, in absolutely. because you get both sides yeah. so you hear the association's arguments and, and it uh, is very balanced i found uh, it's been we, a few years since i went but i used to go quite regularly yeah, it was very helpful when we negotiated to have yep. that information from everyone else as well so i think it's well worth it um Steve report on the change in the front lobby yeah, so uh, just to let the public know that, uh, you know, in the past, uh, people could basically come straight into the building um, and uh, there's a variety of services across the province, much like we were in COVID, where we restrict access to the inner part of the lobby. So uh, folks will be installing a phone, the door will be locked, the person will come in, they call, person on the other side behind the glass will answer and we'll triage what they need. So if they need to speak to a detective or they need to go into the CRC, then they'll be escorted in to do that. It's just a little bit more control at your front desk. Any questions? Come on. I decided in action the other day, Chief, um, there was well over 10 people in mm -hmm. in that lobby and right up front at, at, at the desk. So I. I so we're just for trying to manage that a little bit better, but it, but it certainly will not restrict anyone from coming to the service. It's just a matter of, and in fact, it it directs them better, right? In terms of how to seat, will the detective come down, meet you, go exactly. into the interview rooms, whether it's a traffic accident reporting as well. So, well done. Um, board membership update. Um, you already did that. It was just to. Uh, we heard a call from the, the mayor about the municipal uh, appointee. Um, yes, uh, that is has been communicated. So um, we will get that in due course. So it's still early for that. So yes, that will happen. Any other questions or concerns? Are we adjourned? Can I have a mover to adjourn? Archie seconded by Ian. Resolved that the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you so much. James, thank you. Welcome hey, back. Thank you. Bye, right. everyone. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.